Hello and welcome back to another Let's Play. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take an early look at Xenonauts 2, the successor of Xenonauts, which in return was the spiritual successor of the original UFO Enemy Unknown games, a as close as possible adaption with a little bit more modern engine. Uh, to my understanding, it was a fan-driven project at the beginning before it has now officially been uh, picked up by Goldhawk Interactive. So today I will uh, try a new format since this is the alpha version and I am blessed to be able to play it before the official release. I want to give you um, a distinct look behind the scenes of how the gameplay looks like. So we're going to do a bit of a mini let's play, shall I say. This will consist out of two to three three um, iterations so that we're just going to see how the game actually plays uh, what's in there so I'll go in completely blind um, and afterwards I will also do a combat guide and a review so that you get all of the information in one place uh, is it worth it is it uh, what are the strategies that you should apply and here we're going to start with the answering the question how's the game actually playing so uh, before we jump into the matters, I wanted to highlight a little option down below. You find a code uh, for uh, the Games Planet uh, site for a discount. Uh, you can get the game if you like what you're seeing. I encourage you to think about getting the game. Full disclosure, the code uh, gives you a lower price compared to Steam and will have a bit of affiliate commission for me. So it's a win-win for everyone. If you feel like uh, the game is for you and you want to support the channel, go for it. If not, no hard feelings. You can buy the game anywhere else uh, as well. Just want to put that out of there. Okay, so without further ado, let's see what uh, Xenonauts uh, 2 is um, all about. You can hear a nice little um, almost Jaws-like music in the background. I like it. Uh, so, right off the bat, we can start a campaign uh, as a recruit, as a soldier. You can see all of uh, the different uh, starting uh, settings. So, the higher we go in difficulty, the lower the um, official uh, starting funds. So, the highest we can go at the beginning is Commander, uh, which uh, I'm not even sure if uh, you can... Yeah, it seems to have the highest settings. Um, so, 2 million uh, starting funds. As far as I know, this is super important. At least it was in the original XCOM because you don't make a lot of money. So, the starting funds, as you can see, go down from 3 million here to 2 million. Uh, starting panic is uh, when different regions will defect. Monthly funding, uh, you can see on rec uh, recruit. <laughs> It's 120%. Enemy quantity excessive, I like that. Enemy accuracy, 120% of the normal stats. Um, soldier survival chance is the survival chance if a soldier is being shot down. Um, to my uh, recollection in original UFO, there had been a survival chance as well, but certain armor and buildings gave you a little bit extra so maybe that's the same here as well um, you can see here show enemy health uh, but all of a sudden it disappeared in veteran and then inflicted damage and uh, auto resolve combat is no longer available cool well the auto resolve air combat won't we won't need to deal with that because that's not in the current uh, version uh, armor destroyed on death, yes, because it uh, elsewise wouldn't be hard enough. Dynamic UFO health, also yes, which means more uh, variance in the health. And yeah, we're going to go for Iron Man. There is nothing else. Um, and this whole thing here will be second place, the Alpha. All right, here we go. 2009. The Berlin Wall still stands. Cold War has gone even colder. A clandestine organization named Xenonaut secretly gathers intelligence on a shadowy threat looming over humanity. Sightings of unidentified flying objects and unknown beings have grown steadily more common. 
the strong correlation emerges between these reported sightings and rising international tensions. But those reporting or investigating alien activity frequently disappear without a trace. Mysterious figures, known only as the cleaners, are believed to be responsible. Mere weeks remain to prepare for the coming invasion. Our species stands little chance of survival should the Xenonauts fail to unite humanity. All right, here we go. So, the original UFO was always one of my favorite games. Uh, I even played it years after uh, finishing it, and it was brutal. So, I don't want to sound too old school gamish, but the original games in the 1990s were just not giving a, a crap about whether or not you're going to win. It was really, really difficult. Life was cheap. Uh, actually so cheap that you're oftentimes uh, wonder, we're left wondering why the game is so cruel to you. So anything that you see in XCOM 1 or XCOM 2 nowadays is nothing compared to what the original XCOM was throwing at you. Mainly because the original XCOM was even more uh, unfair, shall I say. In Xenonauts 2 you control the secret organization, we get that. Um, this game features Nesta tooltips, yep, we can click on the links. Uh, mm. And then you wait a bit, and then you click on the next link. Okay. Then you wait a little bit longer, and then you proceed. Cool. We got a chief scientist. I must say it would be great to have names. My work on the radar array is now complete. Theoretically, we should be capable of tracing any alien UFO, uh, UFOs passing the ra radio range. Then we got an operations director. Great option to get a little bit less static names here. How about this guy is called Dylan and uh, this uh, girl is called uh, Tara. That would be good. It's not excellent uh, to borrow all things you've been asking for. Hardly my concern. We must all achieve the impossible if we want to triumph against the extraterrestrials. Well, there is already uh, team chemistry. It's always good to go against each other when the entire fate of humanity is at stake. Yes, very inspirational. So what's the plan now? We wait, an alien craft should pass within range. At that point, the commander takes over. Well, okay, well, that's pretty easy. Uh, why is our central base in the middle of Africa? I mean, no offense, but why? And why do we have 2.5 uh, million available? Is this commander difficulty? Alright, one second. Skip tutorial. Yes, thank you. Alright, Dylan. Ah, Commander. Good that you finally made an appearance. Okay, the Commander this time has a face. It's different uh, to XCOM. Yes, I believe uh, this place is not easy to find. Terra chimes in. Commander, glad to see you made it. Uh, welcome to the backup facility. I had the command room uh, and a cache of emergency supplies installed a while back. Uh, no getting around the fact that our new home uh, is a delinquent uh, nuclear bunker full of uh, 60s era junk though. Hope uh, you're fine with cold showers, uh, cold food and as well cold everything. All right. What's the status regarding the cleaners? Um, relocating brought in some time, but they are still after us. If we don't find a way to eliminate them soon, they'll find us and start attacking here too. But uh, there's an even bigger problem, indeed. Uh, Dylan says, my recent studies once uh, estimated a mass factored in, extraterrestrial activities appear to follow a mathematically a predictable pattern, more precisely exponential growth and we're nearing the end of the curve. In plain English, well, to be fair, if he now sighs, that was uh, even for uh, for scientific standards, it was a pretty shitty explanation. Uh, it follows an exponential growth. Yeah, so what? 
The UFOs arrive in our skies will soon begin to increase rapidly in size and quantity. Yep, that is clear. I doubt it will be long until they launch a full-blown in, uh, invasion. Well, that does not automatically equate out of uh, exponential growth. So they need to work on the dialogues a bit. I don't want to be too nitpicky, but good dialogues are the backbone of any immersive uh, game. And this here looks a little bit more like a dialogue out of a <clears throat> sea trash movie where the person who has put in the dialogue doesn't really know what they're talking about. Okay, uh, do we want to save North America or Europe? Uh, since I'm from Europe, uh, sorry US, but we're going to go for Europe. Um, Iceland isn't that important. I would rather get the Near East in. So something along those lines actually looks like a really good base. Covers a lot of land, land mass and we're calling it Central. No, we're calling it Bradford's home. Oh. Okay, well, that sounds like a good plan. Cool, let's assign a research project. We only have one thing to do, which is combat vehicles. Easy enough. But let's take a look at our main base. So we got a couple of things here, a few hangars. Uh, this here is the Sky Ranger equivalent, and these here are the normal fighters. In the Alpha, air combat is not yet included, so we're not going to focus too much on it. But I can already show you uh, the aircraft here. It does have certain equipment that you can put into place. There are multiple aircrafts over time. These are the kind of normal combat fighters. And for the beginning, we do have Sidewinder missiles, which are essentially lower... Uh, damage but highly mobile missiles uh, and then we got the Skylands torpedo which are the rather heavier missiles which you can then use in order to shoot down bigger UFOs but they can be evaded by smaller ones and as always we have a cannon because no good aircraft would not have an auto cannon. Cool so that's really what we're what we're being uh, given. The Skyhawk on the other side has a um, loadout for nine uh, people and the cool part is you can actually start um, positioning them in however uh, direction you want I'm not sure are these side exits maybe let's give it a try and I am very careful here because I know how easy it is to get a grenade lopped into here and then everybody dies uh, at least that was uh, the good old uh, UFO strategy. So, yeah, we, we do have nine spots. Skyhawk 1 is ready. Uh, mm, let's call it Sky Ranger. Just to make it a bit more uh, XCOM immersive. Good. So, moving on, we do have a few other things. Uh, the radar relay, uh, which is the standard radar. You're immediately greeted with a few base informations. Power capacity is the energy. Living capacity is uh, shared between scientists, engineers, and soldiers. Research capacity is basically how many um, researchers you can have. Engineering capacity is how many engineers you can have. And mind you, the original games in UFO, you didn't get kind of a scientist and an engineer out of thin air. You needed to hire them and you then needed to let them work on stuff. So super important to essentially have them around. Um, can we workshop? Um, engineering, can we armor? Well, Let's just start with two Defender Armors. Research we already got. I'm just wondering if we could upgrade uh, these. Yeah, maybe later. Anyways, good. Training capacity. Uh, training capacity shows you how many training slots you have. Uh, and training is important to not only keep the soldiers healthy, but also give them experience. Uh, and then we got storage capacity, which for us is not really that important. So what are we going to do? Uh, let's start with the medical center. That always uh, is extremely helpful as medical centers typically, typically uh, mean that you will get um, more healing done. So 
that is good. Medical center costs three uh, three hundred fifty thousand, but increases survivability by twenty five percent, which is good, and also heals more hit points. Training center um, increases more training capacity, and that is important. Where is our current training center? So we got workshops, we got living quarters, we got storage room, access lift, generator. Got you. So living quarters down here. Well, in that case, training center over here. They also have little adjacency bonuses, which I find cute. Uh, so uh, it starts with 12 training capacity and you then essentially get two additional training capacity for um, every adjacent uh, for every adjacent uh, training center we don't want to build too much yet uh, so we need train uh, i would love to get a, a second one but we're already down to 1.3 mil and we haven't even started with research and the research center laboratory um, insufficient power okay Okay, okay. Uh, living quarters do not use power, but we need more living quarters. And you can see, putting them adjacent will give us an extra bonus. We're down to 1.1 mil. And wait a second, where's the generator? It was here, right? Yep. All right, so putting a generator here. I like that adjacency thing, that's not bad. We're down to one mil, which means half of our uh, funds are already down. And all we got uh, was a measly training center, a uh, bit of a medical center, more living room and more energy so that we can uh, essentially build another laboratory, which we just did. Um, yeah, and now I finally stop because uh, elsewise we go broke before we even start the game. Ah, Saiken, why are you always starting to push the limits? Good, so now next up uh, we go through soldiers, right? So let's have a short look. Hit points uh, determine just how many hit points you do have. Uh, time units determines uh, the amount of time units. And I'll go through that in the soldier uh, debrief. It's a bit misleading because uh, it uh, kind of indicates that the more time units uh, you have the generally more actions you can do it's not the case because most of the shooting actions take percentages of time units so even if you have a thousand time units just means you can move further accuracy is very very important which means she can already be dismissed we're not going to deal with uh, 38 accuracy it's not happening um Strength determines uh, the range of uh, throwing uh, grenades, but also um, the amount of uh, stuff you can carry. Reflex is super important because uh, the Overwatch in this game uh, works in a way where when you see an alien, both you and the alien roll their reflex and whoever rolls better can shoot first. And bravery is also very important as that determines your uh, uh, capability of withstanding harsh uh, psionic attacks so let's take a look at what we ca uh, what we're dealing with so we got a 42 here not a big fan of it uh, let's get rid of this guy and so bravery is super important accuracy is super important i really don't like the super low numbers uh, you can live with one low uh, with a few low accuracies because there are roles that you can give them that don't require them to shoot that often but bravery is a different beast you want uh, people with super good uh, bravery as uh, so that can also not be um, raised over time that easily 
Sergeant Lucy Richard here, by the way, absolutely fantastic array. You can see um, all of the sets are random and it's not like they need to collectively add up. This is, she's a monster, uh, 60 hit points, 70 uh, time units, everything uh, between 60 and 70, and then on top of it, 66 bravery. Holy shit, let's hope we're not losing uh, Lucy. Good. Next up, let's recruit some uh, new soldiers um, unfortunately this uh, she looks great but 35 accuracy is a big big turn off um, this here looks like a good uh, option for us almost 70 bravery super good reflex uh, very good uh, um, uh, very good accuracy looks like a keeper to me uh, she looks good a little bit low strength but the rest is great so we're hiring three new soldiers and that already looks much better so they will arrive in two days now going back to what we were originally saying uh, let's uh, take a look at what the individual soldiers can do and then we're off to the mission very soon so sergeant uh, the the way that i would like to do these soldiers is over here yep these are the ones that we do have on our uh, sky ranger and you can see they have different uh, they have different armor um, different pre loadouts which i actually think is quite good and you can create a new loadout so salt is a shotgun based um, frontliner grenadier is using a grenade thrower um, Heavy is using a heavy machine uh, gun. Imagine these two roles combined would be the Grenadier in XCOM 2. The Assault uh, would be the Assault minus no sword and uh, so on. The Rifleman is potentially classified best as kind of the Marine uh, type uh, of character. Shield uh, would be quote unquote the Templar minus the uh, psionic abilities. You're actually running in with a primary shield and a pistol and the Sniper is pretty much uh, the sniper so it's a similar concept but much more toned down um, the the guys are not as uh, flamboyant and as comic-y as in XCOM so for a more realistic military simulation this is the way to go let's review a bit of uh, the other uh, things here um, she does have uh, she does have uh, decent uh, um, uh, decent stats all around and the way that I would go about uh, the soldiers is I start with the general uh, with the general stats and then work through the uh, through the different uh, roles. So let's start just putting them all on assault uh, for uh, for the beginning, and then we're thinking about who's actually going to take which role. Um, good. So we did have a lower accuracy. Um, Alma Nielsen here but she does have hit points and she does have decent movement so we'll make her the shield uh, person um, does she have enough strength uh, 56 that's okay the shield is typically quite heavy so you want if you do have low accuracy a higher strength helps um, the other option is to actually make her an assault uh, we want um, soldiers with incredibly high accuracy Uh, such as the new incoming uh, soldier here, but uh, the 60s, we want them to be snipers. Let's go with two snipers for uh, for the uh, for the start. Now we need another grenadier, and typically grenadiers require um, quite a bit of movement as well as a decent amount of accuracy because the grenade thrower isn't that difficult to, uh, isn't that easy to operate. Um, low strengths, I think that's still fine. We can work with it. Now, we got uh, two snipers for the backline. We got one grenadier uh, for various uh, uh, things, cover removal and so on and so forth, um, which leaves us with a few more assaults heavy and riflemen if we so desire so next up assaults need to be fast and need to move in really really far unfortunately it just so happened that the guys with the high time units are 
already taken. Let's maybe make you an assault then, because you are actually super um, quick. And let's use someone with more strength over here to be the heavy, because that requires indeed a lot of strength to deal with the recoil of the weapon. And decent strength, decent accuracy, you look like a grenadier to me. So. We got an assault, uh, two sniper, we got, actually got two assault, three assaults, yeah, and a little bit too many assaults. Let's make two assaults into riflemen. The question is which ones? And the answer to that is time units. So we got, we got assault here, assault here, also okay for the lower accuracy. Then let's make you a rifleman. And average accuracy, not great, but okay. So that already told you a little bit about who is who and how to deal with it. Um, I think what we would want to do is now go through them individually. So let's start with the assaults. You can see uh, the uh, there are two options you either go for an armor or for no armor uh, the defender's armor gives you 15 point, uh, 12 points of armor and uh, i'll come to that in a second the defender's armor gives you 12 points of armor but reduces your accuracy the way that armor works in the game is the enemy deals damage then armor is distracted and whatever is left over goes into your hit points um, there are armor penetrating rounds, but generally this is how it works. So 12 armor is actually really, really good. And you can uh, take additional modules. There are two that you can take at the beginning. One gives uh, three armor and one gives four accuracy, which is fantastic. I like both of them. So just pointing it out, uh, these are the options that they deal with. So assaults also carry medkits which is good because they are the first ones to enter and i actually like uh, medkits a lot you can use them in order to stop bleeding and so on and so forth so the standard loadout uh, for them is a shotgun a medkit uh, then a demolition charge which is uh, imagine it as a grenade that removes cover then they do have a flashbang which isn't bad and they do have a fragmentation grenade i must say i am actually quite content and happy with what they come up as base loadout because i would have done something similar this uh, thing here weighs 6.6 uh, uh, weight so what you can now see is if you're going over the weight carry weight limit you're receiving a time unit penalty aka these guys become a little bit slower but i'm okay with sacrificing just one time unit for the benefit of having another demolition charge so that's not too bad i like the tactical vest as well we're good on that assault the second assault doesn't have enough carry capacity so that's a problem in itself so you can either now go down on armor and just do not wear enough armor or you're trying to go down on the other things in that case removing a few of the grenades not perfect but <clears throat> you gotta make concessions somewhere i still want the armor and the steel plates as these guys are going in first shield person uh, next so we're just going through all of our front line and by the way um, as you can see you can put them in the right order so one two and three will be standing one two and three here which is really really hand handy i like that so we got uh, the shield purse now <clears throat> which does have a primary shield a lot of health, primary cover, shields are protective items, soldier can use uh, them, any damage absorbed by a shield will reduce the health of the shield until it's destroyed. So this is really in order to go in. Uh, does have a secondary weapon, uh, but requires definitely, definitely more uh, explosives, because that's the name of the game for any breaching character they need to be able to deal with cover and explosives and so on so 
This here really is our main cover removal. We got another flashbang here, just in case. And we got the pistol as the only weapon. Not a damage dealer, really more a um, character that is taking a beating. And why didn't we give her those things in advance? Less ammunition. Good, we're still over the carry weight. Um, Fifty-seven time units are still fine. We don't want to have too many time units deducted, but the defender's armor is helpful in this case. Don't need a lot of accuracy, but we need a lot of uh, utility items. We need a lot of utility items. How much weight does that have? Eight. Hmm. Could get two grenades in for that. Nah, I think we're going uh, we're going to be okay uh, and uh, move on. So second uh, row would be the ones with the rifle uh, where the riflemen are standing. Let's just double check real quick. Five, um, uh, four, five, and six. So four is here. Five and six are standing there. Good, which means the next heaviest uh, guy is essentially the heavy. Followed by two riflemen, followed by the grenadier and then the sniper. So, the heavy. Uh, the heavy weapon is actually interesting because it only has bursts and full um, auto and can suppress enemies but the recoil is actually a big problem which is why you want to have that uh, strength boost now you can see we have a lot of uh, stuff here specifically smoke grenades and so on and so forth that's all fine and good but what really matters is getting into full armor and having a tactical module so that will be important for us the offhand weapon doesn't need that much ammunition so now is the question do we do we want to put another grenade in or not grenades are waiting uh, having a weight of four right no six okay hmm. that is unfortunate Okay, we're just going to leave it uh, as is. The riflemen are going to be our core infantry. They essentially have uh, the assault rifle, which can also suppress enemies. And you can see it has a snapshot, normal shot, aim shot and burst fire. And you can also see that uh, it takes a certain amount of the time units. So. 50% um, time unit for a burst shot which means in a hunker down position um, without moving you can unleash two bursts so I like the idea of mad kids they are generally fine makes sense to have them an assault and rifle man uh, they also don't need a second weapon but what they most certainly need is way more armor uh, I'm not a big fan of just letting them go with tactical uh, armor that is uh, mm, like saying you don't need to survive. Having extra demolition charges is fine, but we do have already a few demolition charges with the others. Uh, one magazine for reload is okay. Um, I would rather want to go for a bit more explosives. Something along the lines of this. Three fragmentation grenades, as I value them quite highly. Um, and we could use smoke grenades for them to simply sit in their own smoke. That's not bad. The other rifleman has low strength. So here we need to be a bit more careful not to overload them. So they are just going to go in with less explosives but still the base uh, scenario i definitely like my defending uh, defenders armor uh, which is helpful good 
Last defender is armor, goes uh, to our heavy weapons uh, gal. And she has currently loaded the Hev launcher, which is a massive, massive grenade launcher that uh, will shoot eight times in uh, that case. And uh, all of uh, these heavy explosive rounds are dealing a lot of damage. Great option to just uh, flatten the uh, the, uh, the the profile of uh, the um, environment as well as deal damage to everyone. Unfortunately, you can't, at least I haven't found out yet, you can't really shoot at one uh, location and then open it. You, you will need um, destructive charges in order to do that. So, we're still having a question about more ammunition. Huh? Not really, I think we're fine. Good, finally the snipers. Snipers really benefit from high accuracy, which is why we're having the tactical modules with them. I don't uh, believe that they need a demolition uh, charge, so that per definition is already off. But what they could use is uh, defender armor when available. In absence of that, let's give them a little bit of armor. You can't have two of uh, these plates, but one is good and it doesn't have any downside. We have enough ammunition. Um, now, the only thing that we need is a bit more stuff um, that will be helpful. In her case, a med kit, since she actually has uh, quite a bit of strength with uh, 70. Then another smoke grenade which is definitely help, uh, definitely helpful. So s sitting in the back line and having these uh, defensive toolkit options is great. And whilst we're at it, let's give her another magazine. Good, cool. And finally, we got the last sniper, same ordeal. The good part is once you have equipped them, you don't need to always re-re-re-equip them. Uh, it's sort of sorted out for you afterwards. You can also save some of it as uh, their standard loadout, which I haven't been doing now. I rather wanted to show you how to kind of optimize all of that. Good. So we got our troops equipped. We're definitely ready for some action. So let's fast forward. Engineering completed. Getting two more armors in. By the way, just out of curiosity, one of our snipers had so much strength. This here will barely cost any accuracy. Wow, that would be good. We're still at 60 accuracy, which is great. And we have the defender's armor. Survivability at the beginning of the game is ultra important. Look at that, we got ourselves two more defender armors. Yep, that is uh, good. My experience with testing it uh, out was the moment that you do not wear any armor, it's automatically going to to be an elimination for your soldiers, so they are one shots. Good, we got the mission type elimination, a biome, tropical, and uh, we would induce minus five panic level to Africa if we are successful. So let's directly pick out uh, the Sky Ranger. Has fuel, has everything, and theoretically we could now uh, do the uh, do the equipment but we've already done that so uh, let's commence into tactical battle here we go
All right, here we go. We just landed. So we got a nice little night mission upon us, which means our vision will be heavily encumbered. However, we got these uh, flares here uh, to help us out as and when needed. So let's maybe start by moving our shield guy forward. Look at you! Wow, okay. Well, we definitely got ourselves into a troublesome situation, but we got a sniper, so uh, we might be able to pull this one off. 34, that's not good enough. I am not going to do that. Uh, we're going to rather take this 65% shot. Unfortunately, the bullet has not killed the alien. Moving up. Let's see if another grenade does the trick. No, it does not, but we at least have suppressed him now. Second sniper moves up. Clear line of uh, sight. And unfortunately the shot misses. We're hunkering down. Not good. I was hoping for A bit less problematic start. So. Moving all the way over here. Hunkering down and let's suppress this guy. Or just kill him, of course. Straight into cover. That was actually quite... A quite a nice hit. Okay, 100%. Very good. So, a triple shot, none of which hits, and I think we can do another quick ballistic. You can also change the modes here, which I typically tend to forget. One more shot, didn't work out, back into cover. Let's use our second infantry. Twelve. 18, 24, now we're going burst fire. He's already suppressed. Which allows us to move up just a little bit. We're out of range, so that's not going to work out well. Yeah, let's just hunker down. And I'm going to be careful. One thing that uh, typically is a problem in Xenonauts is your ability to not see everything. So just double checking, let's put flares everywhere. It's very easy in this game to get swarmed from different uh, sides. Very, very easy. So you always want to be in a kind of death ball where you have uh, all of your sides covered. 
We don't have any overwatch shots, but this guy is suppressed. There is definitely someone in here. And someone back here. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Very good info. Oh, there is someone back here. Well, we have a lot of aliens. And it's just turn number one. I wonder... Is this going to reveal someone? It very much is. Hello there, cutie. <laughs> the shotgun to the face. Still works, even in Xenonauts. Good. Sniper has a really good shot here. Let's go. Okay. Worked like a charm. Moving up. Kneeling down. <clears throat> and we're going on to the pistol because that allows us to overwatch. You can see this weapon here cannot overwatch. It has the red uh, eye. So that's good. Well, not that it cannot overwatch. That, of course, is not good. But having an option to overwatch is good. Enemy sighted. Good. Got to be careful here. Um... <clears throat> Well, we still have the option to look into this direction. So the moment that someone comes up, we'll be able to gun them down. Shield moves forward. Remove and cover here. That's why it's important to carry demo charges. Unfortunately, we missed by a slight margin. Infantry moves up, definitely hunkers down, and it's not capable of taking shots here. <coughs> We'll hunker down. Ah, uh, that's really bad. But we could go for one thirty-six percent shot or for a potential suppression. I would go for the suppression. Nope, did not suppress him. Still minus 100%. That's unfortunate. But we're just going to let him overwatch. Got the burst fire ready. So theoretically we can take them down. Now, sniper. I mean, I would love be kind of in a position over here 21 now nah, that's not good enough we'd love to be in a position where we do have a free line of uh, sight could send over here and then essentially take shots in that direction that's not the worst option Good. We have enough time units to actually take a shot, so if the 
alien uh, comes out of uh, the door or jumps through the window we would be able to counter it with a sniper shot all right let's see gotta be really careful not to spread our troops too thin i talked about the death ball there's the reaction you can see they these guys do have a much better reaction than our troops okay well the friendlies are friendly i suppose Yeah, a lot of cover there. Move in. Nothing. Interesting. Looks further in. We're trying. To hit him, okay. But that worked well. That worked very well. Um, moving over here. Ah, that's not good. In which case, we're rather moving to the front line. Okay, careful here. We now know there is another alien. And in order to be safe, let's just use a grenade. <laughs> that worked very well very very well okay good now we're leaving the door closed And we're, we're leaving 12 time units so that the pistol just can get one overboard shot. Thirty-two, yep, that's good enough. Move up, twenty-eight. Okay, things are actually going quite well uh, this time. Not a typical Xenonaut start. Let's take a look at what's back here. Never forget the flares. Flares are valuable and can save you a lot of headache. Now, I think we're really well positioned here with the sniper. If anything uh, was about to happen, we could react. Very good. So, got ourselves quite a few Xenos down already. But we know there's maybe another one back here. So. I'll be careful not to push too far on this side. Uh, 
The name of the game currently is moving through here. Throw a, a couple of flares and hunker down. Shield goes uh, and does the same. More flares. Okay. We're building a bit of a fire line here. Moving up the sniper just in case we need clear aim aiming angles because this here is in the way. And I think we're good. Yeah, I don't want to push towards the right hand side. Like I said, death ball is the name of the game not multiple frontiers at once. This is a non-timed mission, so our main objective is to just kill everyone and we have as much time as we want in order to accomplish that task. Shield moves forward. Shotgun <coughs> supports. Pistol for Overwatch. And I think we will move more soldiers in this direction good these two are keeping the site clean and <clears throat> we're now pushing in deeper There's maybe one more en enemy, so let's make sure they don't get a jump on us. This here is the end of the map. Moving a bit closer. Just double checking that there is no one here. Okay, so move up, turn around, hunker down. Same here. Um, good, very good. Can we get on top of the roof? No, that would be great for a sniper, just some high ground. But we haven't found an access to high ground yet. Okay, as you can see, we're changing sides. Pushing our entire uh, core towards this, no this northern entrance here, and then we're uh, slowly but surely going to breach. First, get everybody in position.
Good. Looks like a decent setup. Uh, we do have smoke grenades. Uh, why did we just take damage? Was that concussion damage? Okay, well, learn something new. Just making it more difficult for the enemies uh, to get clear shots. I thought it uh, worked like smoke in XCOM, but I think uh, this was not super smart. <laughs> okay. Wow. Good, clear line of sight. Time for us to move in. I think the yellow one is concussion damage or just smoke overall. Don't want to stand uh, too long in dense, thick smoke. Good, snipers need decent positions as well. The breaching here is difficult. There isn't any really good cover. In other words, a lot of uh, the cover that is offered, unfortunately also offers options to shoot through it. Good. Uh, let's continue to push in. Sniper moves to here. Lays low. Sniper moves to here. Lays low and I think we're good. Not a lot of overboard shots, but we certainly have made our way in. Time for more flares. And time to hunker down. Okay, good. Uh, move up. That's a really good position here. I like it. Good, and we've very much flared up everything. There are options to get high, uh, high ground, which I would definitely want us to take. K 
careful here because someone could come from the side and just ambush us. Sniper moves up, we want the high ground. And I think we got everybody with the exception of the second sniper. Okay, good. Luckily we have flared the entire area, so this here is good. Can we hit the guy? Uh, we cannot, okay. Can we hit the guy from here? Oh, we're out of range. Well, my experience so far has betrayed me because uh, the sniper rifle is the only weapon that does not have a drop off in accuracy. In other words, uh, you shoot at it from any uh, distance as well as you would shoot at it from uh, from close up. Unfortunately, it seems to have a maximum range. Still good. Uh, just not good enough. Defender's armor, uh, range modifier, and it is small. Well, 8% is not great. So, what we're going to do is first of all light up this area good there still could be someone coming from around the corner so rather be careful. Unlikely because I think these civilians have been killed by that one surviving uh, sectored or whatever the name is. I think sekton is what they are called here. Good, we're hunkering down. That's fine, that's fine. Still got an assault here. Who is running for their lives? Good, end of turn. Alright, we got the shield. We had the shield and it's now gone. Uh oh, as they say.
100% shot. We're definitely going to take that one. Good. Apparently there is still someone around here. Okay, moving, 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 and we're going to get a little bit closer. Yeah, our shield is broken. Oh, that's a problem. But we still have overwatch potential with the pistol. Good. End of turn. I think that was it. I told you there is someone back here. Good, hunkering down. Soon we're going to go up there. Okay, so time for us. Switch uh, sides again. There might still be another one up here, so we gotta be a bit careful. Good, our sniper abandons the position up there. It was a decent uh, try, but unfortunately just not uh, good enough. The weapon range was too short. Good, end of turn. Oh, wow. Come on, there we go. Shotgun to the face always works. And it is down. Very good. That was the first mission and it, I think, worked uh, very well. So, we learned a couple of things. Number one, flares are important in dark missions. Number two, the way that cover works here with the direct uh, firing lines is actually quite uh, a change to the cover of XCOM. The major problem that I do have with a cover here is anything that is not half cover, say uh, the side of a door, there is no way for the agent to really lean in and around the door. Uh, instead, they are just standing behind cover. So that makes it hard to play. Um, and the third uh, thing that we learned is the aliens are actually super fast so 
you can see we got a bit of bravery on a couple of uh, the soldiers and just overall additional stats which is helpful and we even um, saved a couple of locals which again is helpful no medals these come over time but yeah i think the team actually did really well good we got our armor but uh, that was helpful uh, we don't want to do anything else yet sighting of uh, diminutive uh, extraterrestrials with pallid green skin and oversized black eyes are common threats so this is the sekton and uh, these guys do not even have mouth anymore they do have uh, some sort of semi-digestive on on their skin uh, that allows them to to eat we're not going to cancel combat vehicles but alien magnetic weapons look fine that will be our next task for now we're just continuing and you can see there are always little events happening a politician assassina assassinated and these are uh, creating unrest so it's good to see those uh, activities behind the scene and we now got the Mars combat platform as well as the sentry gun cool Although it shall refrain from commenting on the rather pathetic attempts to defend our previous facilities with the cleaners, it nonetheless is thought as a prudent bolster to our defensive options. Sentry gun, an affordable and robust vehicle, has health, certain reflexes, has upkeep. Okay. Well, for starters, I would like to go with... Uh, with magnetic weapons that would be great and then we do have a couple of vehicles 250k for a mars combat platform shall we get one guys you never know if it is worth it unless you try 250 grand is a lot of money <clears throat> but i remember combat platforms were great in the normal xcom they were just ultra sturdy. Good, nothing has happened so far. We have now officially created the Mars platform. Look at that, 100 hit points, 80 time units, decent accuracy, a lot of strength, and is immune. Does it take a Sky Ranger position though? Yes, it takes one position. Yeah, it takes one slot. Interesting. Yeah, we're going to give it a try in the next mission. One platform, can't be that bad. Nice, we got more generation of energy, that's good. Plenty of power capacity <coughs> and we can continue. Good, our next mission, Cleaners Intelligence Hub. Uh, we need to do a capture resource mission. And that would allow us minus 10 panic global, which would be very, very good for us at the moment. The That's going to happen in episode two, which uh, is potentially the last episode of uh, this little play in, but it gives enough uh, idea of how the actual gameplay is supposed to look like. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, consider thinking about um, whether or not the game is for you and if it is 
There is a link uh, down below where you can even get it cheaper. Thanks for watching guys and see you very soon. Bye bye.